Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be discussing and reviewing 15 custom Marvel Snap cards. These were created by a great friend of mine, Willow Snapping. So we're going to jump straight into them. I have my good friend here, Luton Muncher. How are you doing, Luton? Doing good. Ready to go. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, we're going to jump in. Uh, there's 15 total custom cards. Uh, and the first one we have here, guys, is... Uh, Spinneret. So Spinneret, she is a zero energy, zero power card, but her effect is super interesting. So she reads, this card's cost and power is equal to the stakes of the game. So Luke, do you want to explain kind of what that means for the viewers if they're kind of a little bit confused? Yeah, so there is a, we're pulling this from obviously Willow's uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Go follow him there. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has a rule clarification there that the her stats would update uh, wherever she is. So if you play her as a one or a two or a four or an eight, um, then her power will adjust if it changes later. So if you play her as a one and then snap and your opponent snaps and like the end of the turn, it could go four, eight, you know, for one cost. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's really interesting. The fact that like uh, basically you're always going to play her as she, she'll always be a 1-1 a, a unless she gets like leached or something like that. So if there's always going to be one one cube, at stake, she'll be a one energy, one cost. If there's two, she'll be two, two, four, four, four. And then if it's the, the big eight cuber, she'll be an eight, eight card. But I think it's really interesting the fact that like you don't have to spend uh, like four energy on her. You don't have to, again, unless, unless you, I guess like if you draw her and you know, uh, the, the stakes are already high, she's probably not great. She can be like a four, four, but even playing a four, four, that could become an eight, eight. If you're like, okay, like it's, it's really interesting to think that at the end of the game, when the eight cubes do kind of like resolve, that she gets that like that plus four buff. So it's a, it's a really, really interesting card. Really cool design. Um, I'd actually like to see, it'd be, it'd be weird. I mean, all, all I'll say is I think there could be a possibility that Second Dinner could print a card like this since we've already seen a card like Mephisto. Like we know that's a card that's coming mm -hmm. and that kind of has some extra kind of cube interaction. So uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if something like this did come along down in the future, yeah. Well, I think a super interesting thing too with it is the fact that it's energy cost and mm. power would change so mm -hmm. if you couldn't get it down as a one and then it you know you snap it goes to two it becomes a two cost also mm -hmm. so then it can't be killmongered but also if it becomes a four and it stays a four then that means it can be magnetoed like i think there's a lot of interesting mechanics and playing around with stuff of like it's cost changing which would be very unique of it can't be killmonger but it can't now but mm -hmm. now it can be magnetoed but now it can't mm -hmm. stuff like that super interesting for sure yeah all right guys so moving on to the next card here we have a uh, carolina dean she's a two energy six power card and she reads on reveal half this card's power and it says rounded off so for the example right here she is a two six so uh when you play her she will become a two three so there's a lot of kind of interesting things that you could uh, do with this type of card. We've, we've seen stuff where cards' power have been, like, doubled with cards such as, like, Deadpool, your Black Panthers, your Shuri. We haven't seen it be, like, halved, which is a super interesting uh, mechanic. Uh, obviously, the idea of this card is you kind of want to buff it in your hand, so cards like Nakia could be kind of appealing, or, um, I guess, uh, so the interaction with Shuri loot here, would, would this become a 2, a 12, and then it would become a 2, <laughs> a two 6 again? Um. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how that mm. would work with, yeah. with Shiri. Um, the, the way that I'm thinking that I would use this card would be uh, Cosmo or Zero or even Luke Cage. Oh, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about that. Luke mm. Cage, still a 2-6. 100%, so, yeah. Uh, That's an yeah, awesome interaction. Or, yeah. 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 Playing into Cosmo, your Cosmo or your opponent's Cosmo, it's still a 2-6. So I think it's a very unique card that it's basically a 2-3, but if you have interactions to go with it, then, yeah. Or, I mean, even location-based, you know, nowhere, it's a 2-6. So. Exactly, yeah. That's actually really interesting. It's kind of just like if you run Lizard in your Luke Cage deck, except you just always put this in your Luke Cage deck, because it's just like a 2-6 is insane, yeah. insane, uh, insane stats, yeah, for sure. All right, guys, so moving on to the next card here, we have uh, White Sword. He is a 3 energy, 1 power card, and he reads, on reveal, at the end of the game, revive the most recently destroyed card. Now, Lou, I believe there is a clarification for this card as well, yep. Yeah, so with this, uh, White Sword would summon the most recently destroyed card at its original location and side of the board Interesting. so that means it would could bring back your opponent's card so it's, it's a lot of mind games it's a lot of i destroyed something earlier i wanted to bring back this but then your opponent last second destroy something they get it back to kind of mess up where you don't get your card back mm -hmm. i guess it's funny uh kind of like 
uh, anti synergy with this card is if they're going to do something like if you shang chi your opponent's card <laughs> somehow you play white sword you just bring it back again so it's uh it could be interesting like it's actually kind of if they play shang chi right this could be like a kind of like a cool counter because if, if they're if they're going to shang chi something more than likely that's the most recent card that's been destroyed by the end of the game and white sword is going to bring that back so yeah really kind of cool interactions uh, if you're already playing destroy cards yourself you can you can like specifically target something that you want but like i said it's actually kind of like the the tech card to the tech card if you if you want to get a uh, specific yeah well it, it's actually kind of cool too the interaction i'm thinking about is uh zola black panther oh yeah because, oh yeah so you black panther and then you zola it and you get the two copies but then at the end of the game it, the black panther would come back and the way that it says it's uh the position reveal, should trigger again exactly exactly and, yeah yeah and double so very interesting yes. and, and I, I like the mind games of this card that's the big thing i like with this the fact that your opponent can destroy stuff and mess it up and stuff i, I really like that yeah i agree 100 percent. all right guys so moving on to the next card we have a uh, hellstorm he is a four energy four power card and he reads at the start of the game if your deck only contains even cost cards plus one max energy so you're kind of using electro's ability here but you're kind of you kind of have like a deck uh restriction not so much i guess you could say like a limitation but it's more so a restriction of like the certain cards that you want to kind of put into your into your deck what are your thoughts on this one luke i think this is very interesting i think it's very powerful just the fact that you know on turn one you'd have two energy um and um, there is a downside you know like uh um psylocke and electro like the those cards that let you have extra mana there's a downside to them and this, you know, being a reasonably statted card and stuff, and you don't even need to play this card to get its effect. Like, you could never draw this card, never see this card. You get the effect. I think this is probably one of the strongest cards out of the cards that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and very interesting. Definitely something I think, you know, if this was a card actually being tested, you definitely would have to test this one good. This one definitely could be broken i think pretty easily um especially since you know your cards are even call so it's, you're playing your two drops on one like it all obviously synergizes together but i do like this design uh, there's a few other cards like this i think in here too that also does uh like with odd cards mm -hmm. yep and uh I, I really like that idea of trying to find new design space i've done the same thing uh, I've created, you know, my own custom cards on Twitter and stuff. Go check them out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, try to play around with new mechanics. I think playing around with even cost and odd cost cards is just going to be something we're going to see eventually because it's a design space that's easily you can go into and a lot of options. All right, guys. So the next card we have here is a uh, Purple Man. He is a four energy four power card. And he reads, at the end of the game, add a card from each player's hand to a random location so uh, i guess you can kind of compare this to um what is it grand central the location that kind of just like pulls something into your hand i guess kind of like sakar as well um but again this is uh at the end of the game right so you can like set it up so you have like an infinite in your hand you know what i mean and it just pulls your infinite um, or even a chavez like you want to play your your whole hand so um there's a lot of cool cards i, I mean like like straight off the bat like you want i imagine you want some something kind of big to be pulled this is kind of also like I guess, like, Dracula, except it has four energy. Because Dracula, you know, you discard, it kind of gains the power. So this just has four energy. It's it's an actual card, like a body. And then it also just, like, plops down one of your cards. So I think I think it's uh, really interesting. I, I, I am a big fan of uh, end-of-game effects. Big, big Invisible Moon Enjoyer. So um, I would love to see more cards, like, with this sort of effect be added to the game. What are, what are your thoughts on the card, Luke? Uh, I, I really like this card. Uh, the I think one of the most uh, direct things you can point to is like what you pointed out with Dracula. Mm -hmm. This card's very similar to me. I think an advantage you get of playing this card, like you obviously get the disadvantage of your opponent getting a card also, mm -hmm. but you get the advantage of, you know, if you're whatever you're discarding with Dracula with this card, you would get that card's effect. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It has a, a bonus effect that you, you might want. Um, I really like this card too, as it's another mind game card of you and your opponent like as soon as this got played on the board you and your opponent are both okay how do i maximize my end game hand where i can pull something good uh the only thing with this card that i think would be maybe a little too random is the fact that it's random location mm. maybe it should be you know obviously if you were playing this you would play test it and before putting it in the game but pro i would probably test out or probably think that uh 
going into the location that Purple Man's into. Mm -hmm. So yep. you and them both, you know, kind of get a central, a uh, Grand Central Station effect at that location. So random, it, it might turn out not being as good. All right, guys. So the next card we have here is uh, Madam Web. She is a six energy four power card. And she reads, when you play a card, give it plus to power what are your thoughts on this one loot now this one's very interesting this is the one i wish willow was here to explain it to me because <laughs> this one's a little too big brain for yeah me, me too because <laughs> like you're playing it on six mm. but it then you want to play things after it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's only good in wave decks but then after you wave it out you want to play a bunch of small stuff that's not normally how you build a wave deck so like it's yeah, th this one's a, a. I mean, I like the idea. It's a very simple design. Mm -hmm. It's uh, but I I do like it a lot. Um, but yeah, just it being a six four. Um, I mean, maybe you play in a negative. So That's so exactly what I was going to suggest. I know how much Willow loves his Mister Negative deck. So yeah. I mean, you could slot it in, right? Like, because if you play it and you just like you've got a lot of uh, like your zero cost cards with like your ongoings, mm -hmm. like your. Iron Man's your mystiques and stuff like that. So uh, that's definitely, I think, one of the directions that you could definitely fit Madam Web in. Similar to again, like you could play Wave and you can kind of cheat her out like that. Um, with my tiny brain, those are the only two real lanes I can see. It's <laughs> literally either Wave or Mister Negative. There's probably other stuff I'm missing, but um, yeah. Well, the 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 one thing I thought of is uh, turn five. Mm -hmm. You've played a bunch of one drops, and you beast that lane. 100 zeros mm -hmm. so on six you play her first and then a bunch of ones and they all get bigger yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the the only thing i can think of that i could actually see as being a thing yeah yeah. And i think that would be perfectly acceptable to mm -hmm. do like all right guys so the next card we have here is chasm he is a three energy four power card and he reads on reveal if you've played exactly one one uh one one and two cost card plus three power so it's kind of like a, a curve card if that makes sense so you want to play a card on one you want to play a card on two and then you drop down uh, you drop down chasm so uh if you've played any other cards like a zero cost or anything between when you play chasm he will check that so like even if you played a three cost card in between when you played your one and two and it's not chasm it will check and then it's on reveal and um, won't trigger so i mean uh, but, like if, if you get this card's ability off it becomes like a three seven which is like really good like solid solid stats basically like your your black cat right if you just draw a black cat you just drop that down i wonder how this would work actually i was gonna say i wonder how this would work with wong you couldn't <laughs> this card wouldn't really work <laughs> with wong unless wong just yep. got placed on the board somehow but uh yeah yeah it's a car or mm. something yeah 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 um but yeah it's pretty self-explanatory Um, not much i can kind of see what it but it's an interesting concept right like i think uh traditionally in snap like i don't think you really play curve much like we've seen decks where like you literally like more or less pass turn one and turn two and you only start playing cards when you kind of get to, to turn three but there are cards in snap like you know your quicksilver your domino like if it's quicksilver domino and you've got chasm like it's just pretty much guaranteed three seven like if you're just playing a, a rock on a stat uh based deck I think that's something like this card could fit in there and um, it's probably the, the like most consistent way to get it rather than relying oh i want to just have like a, a one or two cost in my hand but then it could also just be good in like a general zoo deck so yeah super interesting card and i think uh it's definitely a cool design space that could be explored with like the kind of curve and uh, mechanic for sure all right guys so the next card we have here is a copycat she's a two energy three power card and she reads while this is in your hand when the opponent plays a card, this becomes a copy of it. I know, I think this is one of your, your favorite cards here, Luke. Yes, this is definitely one of my favorite cards uh, that, I've, that Willow's made, period. Uh, but I just really like it. The, the first interaction, obviously, I love arrow. So my first interaction is my opponent trying to arrow me. So my opponent arrows me on five. If I have copycat in my hand, now I can arrow them. You're like, six. right back at you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I I really like this card. I think it'd be really cool. I think it's, uh, I was thinking about it while you were introducing it. I thought there was uh, some wording problem with it, but I think it, it, it's fine. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like this card. Like, I, I love the whole, like I said, the, it's kind of like a mini game. Because you, you're sitting there and you're like, when your opponent plays a card, you're sitting there thinking, is this the time to play copycat? Mm -hmm. Is this card that they just played, is this the best moving forward? Or are they going to play something next turn that I'm going to want to play? So it's it's very, I, I like this card a lot. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Like if you kind of know what type of deck they're playing, it could be like, oh, I want to save copycat for when they play a certain card. And then if I play that back at them, it can like be super disruptive. So uh I feel like copycat is is like a card that if um, if uh, there's 
like really like telegraph decks in the meta that like you know like what cards are kind of showing up on like if you can get an extra copy like if even if you play the same card if you can get like an extra copy of that card to, to play again um i think you would kind of slot this card into like into pretty much any deck if that was the kind of meta quick question do you know if there's a clarification of this i would imagine when it says become a copy it becomes a copy for energy cost and for power as well like i don't imagine it just becomes like a two three with the card's ability is there a clarification yeah, there, or there's no clarification but the way that is read i would read it that too that it becomes the whole card yeah the, yeah the cost the power everything yeah that makes sense all right guys so the next card we have here is uh mikhail rasputin he is a five energy two power card and he reads on reveal set the cost of two random cards in each player's hand to zero this is my type this is meme central let me tell you meme <laughs> central there's absolutely no shot they could print this card like it's just yeah this is chaos yeah it seems absolutely bonkers also seems i mean i was gonna say just purely based on the stats like you can just like throw negative in with this type of deck but like when when things are already costing zero and you're playing neg negative it's kind of like like <laughs> i don't know you could do it for the memes and there might be some like niche if this ever if this card was ever in the game there might be some kind of niche combo that like you try to get it to hit these two exact cards uh so that you can do some like really kind of cool combo or something like that but yeah i think uh just just off the bat it's like i don't know it, it just seems too it seems too wacky for them to print but i don't know second dinner you know they, they could do something they could do something yeah th this card to me is just extremely wild mm -hmm. just because like the fact that you and your opponent basically get two free cards at random on turn six like yeah someone plays this on turn five if, if I'm in for like a cube, I'm just leaving. Even if I have good cards in hand, even if it hits good zero, I'm like, this is just going to be too chaotic for me. I'm just going to leave now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and it's I, just, I think yeah. as well, the fact that it is a five, uh, more than likely, right, you will have played all of your cheap stuff. So there's a high percentage chance that the majority of cards in your hand are going to be at least probably f four or more, like on the, on, the, on the side of a six cost card at least. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, this, I mean, it, it kind of breaks it a little bit. I guess you would need to kind of do it with a uh, Psylocke or something mm -hmm. because uh, it wouldn't work too well unless you immediately destroyed Electro to because Electro into this wouldn't be very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They play your free cards. Uh, but uh, yeah, but I think cheating this out early where you could have it and kind of have your opponent i mean because like if you could cheat this out early and then maybe leader like see because that's that's why this card i just keep thinking of like the things it could hit and yeah. set your opponent's hand or yours to zero and i'm just like free leaders and destroyers and just craziness it's wild for sure for sure uh all right guys so the next card we have here is siphon he is a three energy zero power card and he reads when the opponent discards a card this has power equal to it so to kind of clarify, you could best compare this card to Null. So Null has the com combined total power of all cards that were destroyed across the game. So Siphon is essentially that card, but instead of all cards discarded across the game, it's just all cards that your opponent has uh, has discarded. So it's basically like a mini a mini Null, but just for, for the uh, kind of discard package, which is interesting uh, because... Unless they're playing, uh, I mean, if they're playing this card, like this is this is just amazing, right? If anything they discard, mm -hmm. if they're playing a Helidex, it's like, oh my god, let me let me <laughs> let me throw this dude down straight onto the board. But um, the cool the cool thing I like about this card is it kind of opens up more decks that use cards such as Moon Knight and Black Bolt, which are cards like I want to see more love for. Like we have a card that's coming out next month, Stature, which I think is going to be super super good with those two um particular cards. Uh, so yeah, I think any excuse to use use a card like black bolt or or, or moon knight is uh, is super super cool and i think this card like i could see this card becoming becoming printed like i said it's like it's kind of like the nuts against a certain type of deck but if they introduce more cards that kind of support disrupting your opponent's hand by actually discarding them i think that could be a, a super super cool kind of like uh deck archetype so yeah what are your thoughts on it yourself yeah i think this card could be very cool and this would be a card like you know like Noel or um a uh I'm trying to think of other cards zabu and surfer like to me there are certain cards that they come out and they have a limited use at the time they come out mm -hmm. But it's also cards you have to keep in your back of your mind moving forward. 100%. Then every card that would make your opponent discard a card would make this card better. Or you don't have to at least look at. And does this card make this card better? So I, I really like cards like that that can only get better or can get better in the future as other cards or locations come out. For sure. Because I'm assuming this would work with locations too. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I assume. Because, like, I mean, Sokovia makes them discard a card, right? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, if they if they introduce more... Um, I... I <laughs> I think it's kind of like I'd like to see. I say that I say this now that I'd like to see more locations that like disrupt your hand or whatever. But if when, like if I had if I had like two two Sokovias and it always hits the, I'd be like oh it could be very frustrating. But um yeah, if they introduce more cards that kind of just have the the disruption type of thing, yeah, this card. Like I said, I, I really like this card. Uh, so the next card we have here, guys, is the Hunter. So it's a card from uh, Midnight Suns. When you guys are a fan of the uh, the new game that came out, uh, this is a, this is a card for you guys. But she is a uh, six six, and she reads on reveal if you've played exactly one one two three four and five cost card plus six power at all locations. So again, kind of comparable to uh, Omega Red with a very very. Um, you know, specific kind of strict thing, because it says exactly one of each of these. So you couldn't do like, oh, it's not like oh, I need to play, like a, I'll play a few ones and then like a two and then a three. Like you have to have one of each of these cards. So it's like the ultimate kind of curve deck with a big, powerful kind of payoff at the end. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this loop? Yeah, I mean, obviously there are dream scenarios where you like turn one, squirrel girl, turn two, Mr. Sinister, turn three, brood. Turn four, Shauna. Turn five, Leech. Turn six, Hunter. Yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like that'd be real strong. Mm. But I also think this card is really restrictive, as in because you kind of have to play them in order. Mm-hmm. But unless you have your one drop, you know, at the beginning stuff, because like, you know, you, on turn five, you, that's the only time you can play the five. You can't play a three and a two because like you don't necessarily have to play them in order for this. But when else are you going to play your five but on five? When else are you going to play your four? So there you can play stuff kind of out of order, but then it gets weird of like when can you play the other cards? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So definitely a card, I, you know, I'd want to play test a lot and see exactly how, how it works. But uh, yeah, very interesting card. I really like the design of it. Yeah, I I think uh, this this card has a lot of potential. Like you, you I think you you could see a card like this in the game because you have support for like if you really wanted to make it consistent. Like you got that Quicksilver, you got that Domino, um. But similar to to what you said, like this is technically like if if this is your, I mean, if you got this card in your deck, you could say that this is like. Uh, pretty much your win condition maybe you have like multiple win conditions in the deck as well yeah. it is restricted like you can think of it as it's a six card combo a six card combo in a in a in a game that has uh 12 total cards i mean with cards like quicksilver and domino you're guaranteeing that you draw a certain part of that combo but uh it's like your draw just has to be like insanely insanely consistent because if you're not getting all of these cards pretty much in order or like becoming the top deck king you know what i mean then it's gonna be super hard to pull this off but i think the payoff is is like if you can pull it off it's insane all right so the next card we have here is uh umar she is a three energy one power card and she reads when a six cost card is discarded add a copy of it to the owner's hand so this is kind of like a little card that can combo with uh lady sif so sif is going to target the highest cost card in your hand so uh if this is on the board you're just going to get like an extra copy which is interesting uh, straight off the bat um i i can't see like any kind of like crazy co- you know actually i'll tell you i'll tell you what this card could fit into a sort of like hella deck with Another card that we're seeing uh, soon, which is uh, Modox coming to the game. So Modox kind of discards your your entire hand. You know, like if you if you discard, there's like an extra one. So it's just basically more uh, Hella Fuel, I think. Like, like that's that's the way I would kind of look at this card. Is it's it's adding it's adding more Hella Fuel, and that's my initial my initial impressions. Is there any particular combos you can see with this loop? Well, that's exactly why you're reading this card. It was like who hurt Willow? Willow's just got his hella discarded so many times (laughs) he's like this has to stop this has to stop Uh, yes uh but uh no exactly what you're talking about uh i think this card would be great with modok Mm -hmm. because the biggest problem i've seen with modok is if you have hella in your hand you don't want to modok Mm -hmm. but if you have this card already on play you can modok your hell in hand and then you'll just get the hella copy out of your hand i think another interesting combo to point out with it is uh ghost rider Mm-hmm. Because the fact that you get a copy. So if you sift a uh, Magneto mm-hmm. and it gets discarded, you get the a copy of Magneto in your hand, which means you can still Ghost Rider and bring back the Magneto 
and the original one that got discarded and still have the copy of Magneto to play in your hand later. Yeah, I think that's super interesting because uh, I think that's the that's the line, right? It's like uh, if it's a powerful six drop that has a powerful effect, you're getting rid of it to bring it onto the board, which is cool. But like my, Magneto's thing is like you want to like kind of keep it until six so you can say, okay, this is where his cards are. I want to figure out like if you play with a Ghost Rider, it's it's just it's more so kind of stats. So, and, but yeah, I think the main, the main combo with this card is yeah, it's just like yeah, it's it's hella protection, right? It's like if Ali gets discarded, she's always going to come back to the hand. Not always, because it could be another six cost, right? But um, with Modok, it's it's pretty much like yeah. I, I think I think this card pairs, pairs with Modok like brilliantly. All right, guys. So the next card we have here is uh, it says Umar, but I believe Willow told me that this is supposed to be Lilith. So she is a five energy six power card, and she reads: At the start of the game, if your deck only contains odd cost cards, afflict the enemy. Afflict the enemy with minus three power at two random locations so straight off the bat this is like like a priority like you basically just have like priority going into turn one which which if you're playing if you're playing a deck that like you want to have priority uh consistently or at least like for the majority of the game i think that's like super powerful uh, obviously it does come with the restriction um but i think it's a it's a really it's a really interesting card like uh the the, the stats for the card are, are whatever you know what I mean? it's 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 five six obviously you're playing it for its effect any particular like deck you can see this instantly slotting into loot like as i said like you want to have priority consistently i can't think of a deck that you instantly would want to slot this in with the deck restriction Mm -hmm. of the odd cost cards but i do think this card could be borderline too strong or very strong mm -hmm. just the fact that there's no way to interact with it and the fact that the effect is automatic mm -hmm. if you've built your deck correctly this just happens mm -hmm. before turn one every single game and there's no way it's not like you get negative three ninjas yeah or something and they can destroy them or do whatever it just it's just an effect that cannot be stopped if you built your deck correctly and you cannot stop it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that could be very strong because right off the bat, you know, you're, you're up six points of power, you know, at two random locations. But, um, yeah, I think this card's very strong just in general. That's, I think that effect in itself would make people want to play around it and, or play with it, you know, test it out, see what you could get going with it. But there's nothing particular that comes off the top of my head. Uh, maybe some kind of bounce bros with a bunch of ones and threes, but then you can't run beast. Um, but you can still run bishop and uh falcon and stuff like that so maybe because you, you like couldn't that. run falcon because falcons are two as well so uh I thought yeah falcon was a three. it's yeah. all good it's all good yeah yeah this I, I mean listen if if again it was it's all about testing right so like uh, mm -hmm. i think alone it's effect like like without thinking of oh what type of like deck that w would it benefit that you wouldn't have pri priority Re regardless of that it this this card's effect that you because you can't stop this from happening like you literally can't if they build if they build a deck like this it's like a, a huge advantage at like at the start of the game you know what i mean so um yeah i think it's a super super powerful card for sure all right guys so the next card we have here is uh yelena blova she is a one energy two power card she reads on reveal add a random non-collectible card to each player's hands this is a question i actually get a lot in chat is like cards like maria hill and shana one of the newest cards people are always like oh like does it add like kind of summon stones or can i add stones to your hand or like ninjas or something like that so pretty much unless it like specifically says on the card like non-collectible well there's actually no card that says non-collectible or token in the game at the moment but i would imagine this is how that kind of would be read so this is a, a super fun card, honestly. It's basically like an Agent 13, but instead of getting an actual card, you're getting uh, you're getting like a token card. And uh, I mean, obviously you'd have to look at all of the token cards and like like straight off the bat, if you get a demon from this, it's like, wow, this is insane. You know what I mean? Demon is probably the best kind of value to, to, to power ratio token card that I can think of off the top of my head because the other one's like, you could get a drone, you could get a doom bot, you could get a ninja, you could get a, a raptor, a squirrel. There's actually a lot of uh, just like one, one 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 token so um again you'd have to kind of do do the math and see okay what are the odds of me getting something good if it's more so like if it's more if it's more oftentimes a bad card well listen there's actually a there's, there's a big pool i don't know how much actually uh, someone someone in the comment section might tell me how, how many non-collectible cards there are in the game but like you could get <laughs> you get like me on there from yelena you could get a uh, void the vo oh my god void that would <laughs> that would be hilarious i don't even know i think is, is void a, f a four energy minus eight i actually don't even know his cost yeah. yeah yeah it's it's super like and then like you could get uh like if you get like a monster it's just like a six nine uh there's loads yeah. of there's loads of there's, there's so many non-collectible cards uh I would play this card for the memes, of course. I I, I would I would want to see what type of things you get. But again, like if you get some of the stones, like the stones are really good. 
You know what I mean? The majority of the time, if you can get a stone, it's it's super cool. So yeah, this is probably one of my favorites actually from from Willow. Will, Willow Willow loves to throw in a wacky card every now and then, and this is definitely one of my favorites for sure. So I like the chaos of it, of that there is such a big discrepancy between the power of the token cards between a demon and a doom bot or a squirrel and monster island like stuff like mm -hmm. that like i really like that but something that i don't i mean you obviously read it but i don't think we put any emphasis on it's each player's hand oh i actually so your opponent can get a demon your opponent can get you know uh, a void so i think that makes it a uh, super interesting and uh, I, I could just see, you know, people playing this card and instantly being upset that they got a void and their opponent got a demon. Yeah, but... <laughs> amazing, amazing. I actually did miss that. Thank you very much for pointing that out. I just instantly kind of read it as, you like, you're, you're, like, another version of Agent 13, so it's just you. But, yeah, okay, you do mm -hmm. actually give something. So, you could give, give something bad, like, like you said, you can give a raptor to them. You could get a demon or you could get a, a really cool stone or something like that. Yeah, super, super cool card. All right, guys, so moving on to the last card. Uh, it's kind of, this looks a little bit different. Uh, this was requested by Willow as when I did his first set of uh, custom cards, I didn't include this card because I was just picking 10. So uh, this is one of his personal favorite cards that he's made. Uh, this was made all the way back in June of uh, 2022. But this is Penny Parker. She is a two energy, zero power card. She reads on reveal, add spider to your hand. And spider is a token, a non-collectible card. And uh, spider is a zero energy, one power card. And he reads ongoing. If Penny Parker's location has 15 or more power, this is has plus five power. So uh, a really, really interesting uh, card. Uh, straight off the bat, uh, it's not like Omega Red, so you don't have to win by a difference of 15 power. As long as that location where Penny is just has 15 power, this basically just becomes a 0-6, which is essentially a, a, a free, again, comparable to Demon, but it's super, it's actually super powerful. We've never seen any zero cost card that's better than, in, in pure like stats, that's better than the zero two, right? But currently in the game, I, I, I don't believe so. So this would be really, really cool. And uh, the cool thing as well is it's not like it uh, it just like adds it to the board, it adds it to your hand. So then like you can kind of be like, okay, uh, I want to kind of get this lane up to the 15 power and then decide somewhere to throw it. So again, I think it's really, really similar to Demon because it, a lot of the time when I, when I, when I play the Hood and Demon, I want to, I want to save that Demon until the end. End, so I can kind of figure out, okay, where do I want to throw, throw out this power? Also, to, to avoid any kind of Killmonger stuff. In this situation, it it doesn't have to worry about that because it is a zero cost. But uh, yeah, I, I I love this card. It's, it's super flexible and very different to any kind of card we've seen in the game before. Uh, yeah, I really like this card too. Uh, I really like the, the fact that there's the 15 or more, so you don't have to, you could be losing that location, but as long as you got 15 power in there, then your spider is going to be good. I mean, obviously good with Wong, um, which which is also interesting because like it's good with Wong, but then the spider token is also good with like Onslaught, Onslaught and stuff, and yeah. Onslaught Citadel and stuff. So uh, that that's kind of cool. Um, and then also like uh, the fact that you can, the, you're splitting it up basically. Like, I mean, you could have the token in the same lane, uh, that, but I think that would be really hard to then get into 15 power if you have a, a zero and a one there. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the idea of this card. I really like the flavor of it. Um, I know this is one of his favorite characters. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I really like this card too. And I think it's very unique. All right, guys. So that was all of the custom cards that we have for today. Some really, really interesting ones in there. Uh, my favorite was probably, uh, Yelena. I think that's a really, really cool idea. Like, I'd love to see more cards like that where, like, you can actually get a uh, non-collectible cards. Lou, what was one of your favorites uh, out of that set there? I think my favorite was Copycat. Just like I love cards that either make you build a deck unique or have like mind games. And like I said, that that it's like a mini game. It's the whole game as they're playing cards. You're just like, do I play it now? Do I wait? Mm -hmm. Do they play something better that I could copy with it? Like, I, I, I really would enjoy that. 100%. Well, thank you very much for coming on as usual. Uh, guys, make sure you go down below and check out uh, all of Loot's links in the description. He's going to come back to streaming soon. Uh, he's very active on Twitter. Uh, he's also helping. Little shout out, guys. We have the New York City Snap Tournament coming up on february 18th so make sure you tune into my stream for that i'm super super excited to see how that's gonna go like the first real competitive snap competition so yeah thank you very much guys uh, for all the support that you give on these videos and uh, yeah take care we'll see you in the next one